And in a new book out tomorrow, journalist Keith O'Brien says that the parallels between Otani's interpreter and Pete Rose's gambling uh, scandal are uncanny. Keith O'Brien joins us. He's uh, this morning. He's the author of Charlie Hustle: The Rise and Fall of Pete Rose in the Last Glory Days uh, of Baseball. Went to a great high school, I understand, Keith. Uh, a former bomber. Same high school as you, Joe. Same, same high school uh, where I went. I'm trying to think, if you grew up in the '70s, you were you at, at, of age to watch what kind of player? Pete Rose was in the Big Red Machine? Yeah, so I was too young to remember the Big Red Machine years, 75, 76. But I'm in the wheelhouse of my boyhood love for baseball Can't in 1984 it. when he's traded back to yeah. the Reds. And, and of course, I remember everything after that, both the good and the bad. And there was both in you the 1980s. Escape, if you grew up in Cincinnati, you can't escape uh, I guess a lot of towns. That's what, it, that's what it's like uh, with baseball when you're a kid. It, it was amazing. but. You did miss out a little bit on I mean, Morgan, Bench, Perez, all those guys. How does this, I don't understand uh, the similarities. And I remember, you know, Pete Rose. I remember what happened. Was it just on the Reds? Was it ever against the Reds when he was controlling who the starting pitchers were? I mean, it all made a difference. And, and it was Giamatti, who now is a more famous Giamatti now. But the guy, so, so many weird things happened, Keith. But what are the parallels? Well, I mean, as, as you said, the parallels between what's happening today and what happened 35 years ago are, are significant. To be clear, you know, there's no indication that Shohei Otani or his interpreter uh, was betting on baseball. And that was what, of course, Pete Rose uh, was accused of and was doing in the 1980s. But the way it's all unfolding right now is incredibly similar. It's, you know, it's weird. There's some weird things that we don't understand. And it's been a long time before Shohei Otani is going to be speaking to the press. This well, is and this is just undoubtedly already, no matter what the details are, it is already the greatest uh, gambling scandal in baseball since Pete Rose 35 years ago. And, you know, it, it, just like 35 years ago, it's the press who is breaking the news. It's a federal investigation, you know, around uh, the, the inner circle of the player. These are the things that started to unravel Pete's world in 1989. Wasn't on DraftKings either. And, and when it's, uh, that's, that's not a great, or it can be a, a risky component of society when you're dealing with, I mean, these are underworld figures you're dealing with, aren't they? Or that Pete dealt with, these were, these were not legal Bets that were being placed. Well, Pete obviously in in the nineteen eighties well, was, illegal. was How about with these? bookies. Well, and, and the same thing is alleged today. You know, and and there's a reason. Let's be clear. There's a reason why a player or someone from his inner circle would be betting with an illegal bookie rather than on DraftKings, and that is Major League Baseball, the NFL, all the leagues are are hiring uh, third party contractors who are monitoring wagering on legal platforms. They, they can flag in a, in, in a matter of minutes uh, if someone is placing a bet on a game inside a clubhouse, someone connected to a player. So if one did want to bet today, uh, as Pete Rose once did, the only way to do it is to go to the underworld. And, you know, we all know now that legal gambling is a major industry. You know, $120 billion was legally wagered on sports last year. But also, roughly every year, about $60 billion is illegally wagered on sports. And so those bookies are still operating in the underworld. But the underworld today isn't back alleys or smoky bar rooms. It's, you know, some of these bookies today, illegal bookies, have glossy websites just like DraftKings and FanDuel and the others. What do we know about, was, was show he himself behind the, the wagers? What, what do we know exactly at this point? So the, the fact is we don't know much. Um, you know, the story has changed several times just in the past five days. Um, what, what, what we know at this hour is that uh, someone, whether it was uh, Shohei Otani or his interpreter, uh, paid off a significant debt allegedly to an illegal bookmaker. This reportedly is a figure of millions of dollars, $4.5 million. $4. Dollars. $4. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, so it's, a, it's a, an enormous amount of money surrounding uh, the biggest star in, in baseball was today. Stole, was it stolen from him, or, they, or is that just the story to cover up the 
gambling. Who knows? Who knows? And, and, and that, that's why it will be interesting to see what Shohei does or does not say today, just as it was interesting 35 years ago to see what P. Rose would or would not say about what was happening in his inner circle at that time. And that's another, you know, key parallel here. You know, Pete often uh, and rarely actually placed his own bets on sports. He was always using guys in his inner circle. And it was federal investigations around these men, Pete's uh, friends and, and, and cohorts that led to Pete's downfall. Um, the feds weren't looking into Pete Rose in 1988. They were looking into the men around him, and that's what led to the knowledge of what Pete Rose was doing back then. Four and a half is a lot of money, four and a half million. What did he sign with, uh, for, with the Dodgers? $700 million. So let's contract. keep that in perspective. It's not a lot for him, but it would be a lot for his interpreter. It would. To get caught into it if would, they were actually bets coming I've from I've heard about guys, you know, you know don't need to name names, but when they're in Vegas, you know, some basketball guy, $500,000. Unless you're at, betting at on baseball table. games, which you don't know. And it's a lot of money. And um, they're, I think it's weird that they're both so amazingly. I mean, Pete, no one's ever getting 4,200 hits, yeah. I don't think, and ever. That's, a, I, I like, that's like 20 seasons of 200 hits. It's, it's an incredible figure. And, and just to put it in perspective, I mean, the active leader in baseball today, the, the active hit leader, has roughly half of that, and he's in his late 30s. And so this is a record that's never going to fall. It was a record that people didn't think was going to fall in the first place, you know, when Ty Cobb first held right. it. Right. Another know, piece of work, yeah, uh, right, too. Right. Because Pete is, it, I, I, I were from the, you were born on the west side, but I don't really think you're from the west side. Right? I know. Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> see, this, we're, now we're having a Cincinnati <laughs> yeah, conversation. Right. Uh, and I'm definitely from over I used to see Pete around because he went to West High, which right. is right up the street from my house. He had a Corvette. Um, he was, he's, he's just a real interesting guy. But um, both of them incredibly talented. Does this... Are the Dodgers bummed? Like, is this going to be in his head uh, this year, do you think? Is this going to get in the way of, of what they paid for? They paid, paid for a lot to have this guy. They won a World Series uh, badly, right? I mean, for, forget about the Dodgers for a second. I believe Major League Baseball is it's incredibly worried. disappointed. Oh, Again, no. this is the most recognizable, the most famous baseball star in the world. Uh, you know, and, 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 you know, just as Pete Rose once was in 1989. I mean, Pete Rose in 1989 was like, like a, uh, an aging so this, version. This has Shohei to be handled, right?